As much as I love my low-hanging fruit, the, the big Nick types, the, the people who don't have a rational bone in their entire bodies, which is not saying much for big Nick because he's knee-high to a grasshopper, today I thought we'd go after what you would call a worthy opponent, uh, Michael Shermer, an OG skeptic. He's such a skeptical person, he even has a magazine called Skeptic, which is almost as old as I am. This magazine is 32 years old. Um, I read it as a teenager. I'd say Michael Shermer is one of the people who led me to skepticism in the first place, which is why it hurts to have to make a video like this. I don't like correcting people who have been so good to me. I really don't. I want to think the best of everyone, and I want to think that they can do better, but in Michael Shermer's case, I just don't see any evidence of that, and I'm going to lead you through that in a second, but one more thing I want to talk about before we do that is how the hell we got here, because you might be wondering, well, what has this man said that makes him such a prime target for such an ardent, smashing young skeptic like yourself? And my answer is, it's the Olympics. Of course it's the Olympics thing. If you're watching this at some point in the distant future, you may not realize this, but the Olympics has been something of an issue this year. There was an amazing opening ceremony for it. Um, it's taking place in France this year, and a cool band called Gojira played and just ripped it up with an amazing performance that was, of course, accused of being satanic, not by Michael Shermer, I might add, but by the usual suspects, the big nicks and such. But uh, there was a bigger issue that came about uh, as a result of the Olympics this year, and I think if you've followed the news at all, you probably have some idea of what I'm about to talk about. You see, there was this boxing match between two boxers, and one of these boxers is a more masculine woman, and it seems like she's, she's very tough. She's very strong. I mean, she's a boxer, but she's very tough, very strong woman, and she just absolutely gave a good blow to the other one, and the other one had to quit, left the stage crying, and J.K. Rowling, Michael Shermer, and others seized upon this to say that this boxer, this female boxer, was actually a man. And when I say a man, I mean that in many different ways, because the first narrative went something like this. Michael Shermer begins by saying, even the athletes are infected with the woke virus. Then he goes on to quote the losing boxer who said, I am not here to judge or pass judgment. If an athlete is this way, and in that sense it's not right or it is right, it's not up to me to decide. I just did my job as a boxer. I got into the ring and fought. I did it with my head held high and with a broken heart for not having finished the last kilometer. Shermer goes on to say, it's up to the sports organizations to ban men from women's sports. MTF trans are not women, they're men, and they should not be allowed in women's sports, bathrooms, changing rooms, prisons, etc. Everyone speak out loud and clear on this, or else the minority of people who believe a man can become a woman will continue to erode women's rights. Aside from advocating against the rights of trans people in that comment, you may be wondering, well, what's so wrong with what he said? Sports, obviously, is a serious issue, and I'll, sure, grant it, whatever, I don't really care about sports, I'll leave that to everybody else to decide. But the bigger issue here, the big issue that this all hinges on is, the boxer in question, an Algerian woman, is not trans, and I think that would have been pretty obvious if Michael Shermer had held on to his skepticism for more than five seconds after seeing the pictures and J.K. Rowling talking about it, and just googling something like, let's say, uh, LGBT rights in Algeria. In fact, let's do that right now together as a team and see what it is Michael Shermer missed. LGBT rights in Algeria. Status. Illegal since 1966. Penalty. Up to three years imprisonment. Gender identity. No, of course not. None. We were lied to. So what happened? What happened, Michael? What happened to your skepticism? Where'd the skeptical go? I wanted some skepticism. Why do you think I ever visit your Twitter in the first place? I want skeptic. That's what your thing is. You're the skeptic guy. You do the skeptic magazine. You write the skeptic books. I own a couple of them. I used to read your magazine. Why have you failed me in such a grandiose way, Mr. Skeptic? Why did you latch on to the first internet conspiracy about this person you could find, use it to go on this crazy anti-trans rant, and then just like pretend that never happened? 
I've talked about this before, and I'm sure I'll talk about it many times in the future. One of the big problems with the mid-2000s skepticism movement, and I do include New Atheism under that umbrella, is it really had a lot of post hoc justifications. Um, you know, we could come to the uh, understanding, rationally, that religion is bad because it makes people not-so-critical thinkers. I think you could put Dawkins in this camp. Um, he is a biologist by trade. Biology is very important to him. Science is very important to him. So, of course, he takes that thinking to its logical conclusions, and there is no God. Um, somebody like Michael Shermer, he was a skeptic, he was skeptical of religion, takes that to its natural conclusion, and it's, I need to defend myself from the accusations religious people are throwing at me of just being anti-God or whatever. And so I relate to them on this subject. But the post hoc rationalizations bother me a lot more than that, because a lot of these people, they're not, let's say, gay people or women, but yet they'll go on and on about how bad religion is for gay people and women. And it seems like, in a lot of cases, they're not really doing this because of how much they care about gay people or women, and I think if you look over Dawkins' history, or Shermer's history especially, you'll see plenty of examples of this kind of thing. What I'm saying is, whether Michael Shermer knows it or not, he has something of an agenda, and that agenda is very much anti-trans. For one reason or another, Michael Shermer has decided he doesn't like trans people a whole lot, and will do practically anything he can to get at them, thus assuming from what, by all accounts, is a cis woman, is a trans woman, just so he can go on this bizarre tangent about how he thinks trans people don't deserve air to breathe or whatever. I'm being dramatic, please don't sue me. I've heard Michael Shermer sues people very easily. I guess we'll have to see how that goes. You know, there's nothing that says I'm confident about the things I'm saying, like, I will sue you if you point out that I'm wrong. But to lay bare my grievances against the mid-2000s skeptics, the main point I'm getting at about those people is, in the mid-2000s, they felt like religion was the big thing imposing on them. Religion was sticking its nose into science with the intelligent design stuff. Religion was sticking its nose into politics. All over the place. Religion was everywhere. You name it, religion was there. Massive influence over everything. I mean, it was a wild time. If you're too young to remember that, be glad you're too young to remember that, because it really sucked. But now, for people like Michael Shermer and any number of other skeptics, they don't feel like it's religion imposing on them so much, which is why they're now so much friendlier to religion and religious people, and a lot less friendlier to trans people. I mean, they definitely see it as kind of like a wedge thing, like now, we, the skeptics, who were always right about everything, can band together with the Christians and stick it to these woke people, whatever that means. I mean, you know, I still don't have a coherent definition of what exactly it means to be woke, I just know that I get called woke all the time, so I must be that, whatever that happens to mean. But my friends, my friends, the story doesn't end there, because oh no no, it can never be so simple. People quickly pointed out, hey, Michael Shermer, you have been the victim of a conspiracy. It turns out uh, it's illegal to be trans in Algeria, this is not a trans woman at all. And of course, he said he was wrong, he apologized to the trans community, and everything was, no, he didn't do any of that at all, he just accused her of being a man in a different way. Michael Shermer said, Correction, on an earlier tweet, I referenced MTF trans. Olympic boxer Imine Khalif does not so identify. Ike Saul points out to me that she had DSD. The thing she failed wasn't a testosterone test, it was an XY chromosome test. See Hoovlet long post on DSD. So he dropped the ball, but then, immediately after that, he found the truth, the real truth, that she has a difference in sex development, that she's intersex, or has XY chromosomes, or something like that, high testosterone for a woman, one of these things. It was so obvious, wasn't it? Wouldn't it be weird if there's really no actual confirmation of that, and the only source that actually points to that kind of information is by a discredited Russian organization that was known to have cheated to let its athletes win competitions? Wouldn't that be wild? Boy, isn't it a good thing that didn't ha that actually happened, yeah. These were fueled by Khalif's disqualification from the 2023 Women's World Boxing Championships, organized by the Russian-led International Boxing Association after failing unspecified gender eligibility tests. 
This disqualification happened three days after Khalif defeated a previously unbeaten Russian prospect, thus restoring the Russian boxer's undefeated record. The IBA's Olympic status was later revoked due to governance issues, as well as judging and referee corruption. The International Olympic Committee and its Paris boxing unit stated Khalif was eligible to compete in the Olympics and criticized the IBA's previous disqualification as sudden and arbitrary and taken without any due process. There is no evidence that Khalif has XY chromosomes or elevated levels of testosterone. I must just make note for the record, because I'm more honest than Michael Shermer seems to be, that just because this Russian-led organization seems to have cheated and made decisions arbitrarily and so on and so forth and got disqualified from doing anything related to a number of boxing competitions does not mean they are lying about this specific result. However, I think it's pretty safe to say we're going to need more evidence that proves their case. Could they be correct? Could Amani Khalif be, in fact, a man? Well, sure, whatever, I suppose. It's not outside the realm of possibility. Stranger things have happened. But what I am saying is there's no evidence for that at this stage other than, well, you know, we disqualified her for that. Yes, you did. But you were also a fundamentally untrustworthy institute in the first place. So there we have it, a mercifully short uh, exploration of how Michael Shermer dropped the ball and then dropped it again and continues dropping it by continuing to refer to this person who seems to be a woman as a man. And of course, there are other terrible things on his page. I won't mention them now, but if you want to go see them, you can for yourself. There's more anti-trans stuff. Um, it's always curious to me how men seem to want trans women to be in uh, men's rooms, regardless of what they look like or what anatomy they have. It's very curious to me just how interested people are in these sorts of things. Um, now, you know, again, this is all very controversial stuff at the moment because there's something of like a trans panic going on. And of course, uh, none of these trans panic people ever let the moment slip. So Michael Shermer did the opportunistic thing and it came back to bite him a little bit. Now he's doing a different opportunistic thing and hoping we all forget. But I'm not going to forget and I hope you don't either because we should not. Uh, if you watched this whole video, well, thanks for being here. I hope you have a great one.